Hi guys, Kevin Muldoon here. What I'm going to do in this video is show you me editing a video on my Surface Pro 4. I just recorded a video about my first impressions about the Surface Pro 4. It was about 30 minutes long. I want to show you the editing the video on Premiere Pro because this is going to be the first time I've did it and I thought it'd be interesting to share you know to show you how it works and to show you how it performs. Now for reference the the model that I have is this. I've got an Intel Core i7 6650U CPU clocked at 2.2. Believe it can turbo boost up to 3.4. I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM and I've got the 64 bit operating system. So I'll jump into Premiere Pro and I'll start setting this up. So I'm actually using the default webcam and the microphone from the Surface Pro 4 as well. So that will let you see how that performs as well. Um, first impressions. Okay, let's do this. So what I've done just for reference as well, um, if you want to display, I've got it set full resolution. So I've already said 2736 by 1824 resolution. But what I've done is I've, I've scaled it down to 150, 150%, sorry. By default, they they recommend 200%. And you can go all the way, you know, when it's not scaled, you can make the landscape huge. But I found, I was looking at, and you know, I, I think 150% is probably my limit before, you know, things get a little bit, you know, too difficult to use, too difficult to, to see things. I think this is kind of a good um, in between, you know, the resolution is still good and I can still see things. So what I need to do is import files. I've not partitioned this hard drive yet. I've just copied over the files there. And oh, if you didn't know this was the first time me using it here, you can see it there because I'm just getting messages about having to install things. So there's a few little things that I need to do here. Uh, in this video, I mean, I, I don't do a lot of editing in my videos, if I'm honest, which I don't know what your opinion on that is, but I like to just kind of click record and just, you know, go for it. What happened here, though, what I was filming with this camera, which you can we see in the background here. Can you see it? Yeah. So I was filming with that camera and because the file was, um, you know, because the video was 30 minutes long, what it has done is split the video into two it's put one at 20 minutes long and one at nine minutes long so what i'm going to have to do is try and synchronize these up first and um, okay so sync with the audio so what's effectively happened is um i've recorded using my zoom h6 I've recorded the audio using that the audio is a bit it should be a little bit better because i've used that um yeah so there you go you can see it's all matched up now and in theory in theory now if i do drop this other clip okay if i drop this other clip here and then in theory it should match up perfectly when it's plugged in as long as there's no spaces there It's hard to see there, but um, let me see. You gotta get my face right up to the screen a lot because I'm zooming down. Um, is that okay? Yeah, that looks fine, doesn't it? Yeah, everything seems to be perfect. So what I need to just do with these is unlink them. Unlink. Delete those ones. So that's the audio from the camera away. Just move this up and link this. In fact, I'll, I'll merge these clips just now. I think that's better than to uh, nest them. Right, so that's one sequence. Um, and then I'll link these together. Oh, I think they're, are they linked already. There we go. So that's. So basically all I've did there is remove the audio. 
uh, from the camera and replaced it with the audio from the from the Zoom H6. So now what I want to do is just display. It. I've just got a simple banner now. This is I'm kind of torn with this as far as my intro banner at the start. I've just displayed my my website name and my logo. Personally, I don't want to spend. I don't. I've kind of um, thought about doing um, like a, a nicer, more professional logo and things like that. But at the same time, I don't want to annoy people either. You know, I just like to get right into the video. So, in theory, hold on now. Just get the time scale right. So what's it going up to? Fifty. I'm just checking this right. So this this camera records on fifty frames per second. So what I'm going to do is I normally just put it like a minute and a half. So that would be one minute right there. So it should be there. And then oh, get that there. And I also put this lower third thing here. And link that button bit. So this is just a little silly thing. I did, I did it years ago. Um, I just kind of displays my logo on Twitter. So we'll display that there. If you, you know, you're, you're probably at this point realizing how little, actually, how little time I spend editing videos. Part of that is because of time as well. You know, I'm a blogger, I've got work to do, and I've also found as well that, that when I have spent a huge amount of time editing a video, I haven't seen the the rewards from it, you know. I know I know that's perhaps the wrong attitude to have, but I found that I'm just checking this all right. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I've just found that I just kind of find it easier sometimes just to get stuck right in, get the video online. Sometimes that's worked out well for me, you know. It's um, the video's done well. Sometimes the videos have been poor. Um, and what we'll do at the end here is just find the end point here. So I always kind of say goodbye at the end. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care. Take care. So I've said till next time, take care. That was nice, mate, wasn't it? Thanks for watching, Thanks for watching guys. Until next time, take care. Take care. So. I'm just going to get about there. I'm going to cut that. And then the same logo that I had at the start, or maybe I'll put it in at the end. Just um, there. So I've got that 29 40 12. What I normally do is I'll do it a minute and a half later. So that would be. Is it a minute? Uh, yeah. So I would do that as 41. And then that would be 37. So then I just use a default and um, transitioning. As you can see, um, I don't do much with editing there. Now, this video is about editing this video in the Surface Pro 4. As I said, I've scaled it down 150%. I've scaled it up to 150%, sorry, just so that I can see everything a little bit better. It's a little bit smaller. I'm not sure if I'd maybe want to... Um, scale it back up to 200% though because I like having you know the big, the bigger canvas so what I'm going to do is just play this just now um, oh in fact and what I need to do change the audio let me normalize the peak so it's not made a huge difference I'll just see here the problem is you do get these peaks that mess up this kind of thing and um, what I should really do is I have no doubt that people who are watching this are cringing. People who are good at um, who are really good at um, editing or cringing at the way that I'm doing this. I think that should be okay. And then something set gain adjust by let me just take it in one. Right, so here's what's going to come out. Hey guys, Kevin, what's Kevin doing here? It was a little bit jerky there, wasn't it? The, the playback? Hey guys, Kevin, what's doing here?
here. What I've got here, just a bit. The fan, I'm not in the, the microphone, but the fan's got a lot. Four. This is what a lot of people are calling. Yeah, playback seems a little bit jerky there. Um, the fan is going quite a lot. What we'll do just now, I'll just put on the task manager so you can see what's going on here. So the CPU was going high there. You can see I'm not using it any memory really, I'm using about 5 gig or so. Um, CPU is going down a little bit now, but when you do playback, you can see playback is really spiking the CPU, it's really, really putting it under pressure. It's up to 90% now. Surface Pro 4. This is what a lot of people are calling hybrid devices, but I'm seeing a lot of people in the UK calling it two in ones or convertibles. So the CPU is running at two gigahertz now. I thought this would, I'm not sure how, I'll need to look into this. I think I can turbo boost it, improve the CPU, but I was under the assumption that a lot of that kind of thing happened automatically, you know, when you're, um, CPU, how can I clock it up? So that's something I'll need to look into. I'll need to look into how I can clock up the CPU because it can go up to 3.4 gigahertz. Definitely the CPU is what's taking all the, um, what's bottlenecking here. You can see when I'm playing this back. So I was looking there at, different ways um, and to monitor your CPU and check what was happening. A lot of people were saying to check your BIOS and a lot of other people were saying not to check it. Now, I've not did that yet, but I went back to just play the video to check how my CPU was being stressed. And I noticed that the CPU is now being, it's now at 100% and it's now at, you know, you can see it's been, it's up at 300% now. So, is 8 megapixels with 1080p HD recording. I'm, I'm unsure as to what happened there, but you can see here that now I'm getting 3 gigahertz. You know, the fan's going, and, and when that's happening, you can you can hear there, the video is editing okay. I'm not sure why that was happening initially. I don't know why it wasn't happening right away. I just assumed that once the CPU got under stress, the turbo boost would kick in. It's not something I've really, you know, read about before. It's just, this is something that's new to me because I don't think my last laptop had that. Um, so that is quite interesting to see that until the turbo boost kicks in, you know, things were stuttering. But with i7, it does seem that um, things get a little bit better once that, you know, once 100% of the CPU is being used. Now, if you've got if you've got a, a battery saver plan on, you know, I've got one where you know, like the brightness and things like that is different. When I plug it in and I'm like, uh, when I've not plugged in and I'm using my battery, then that I don't know if that would affect it. You might have to adjust your power settings, but it does seem that once the full CPU is being used, it does seem like everything's working okay. Um, and you can see here that the process. Premier Pro there is still is still using about fifty percent. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care. I don't know if that used the did that use the transition there? Did it? I'll just check here. Take care. Yep. So yep. Um, this was my first time using it. After that initial problem with the CPU not being used, it does seem that editing videos is going to be absolutely fine on this, at least for, you know, 1080p videos and things like that. All I have to do now is I'll save the video and then I'll export it for YouTube. Now, what I will say, though, is be aware that when you use programs like this, when you use um, is the preset, what's this? Oh, God. This is the thing. Um, see, when you've... Um, I've just, this is the first time I've used it on this. Val DB. Where's the preset for? Ooh. I see things. See, see when you're using Premiere Pro for the first time, you know, my settings are different from they've got the, the way that I've got them set up um, on uh, my other laptop and on my iMac, so I need to kind of check the settings for whatever reason that. Um, 
the whatever what would you call it the YouTube presets weren't popping up there, so I need to check what's wrong there. So format, I imagine I need to sing the H. Is that what I just need? Yeah, yeah, that's what I need to do. Panic over. So all I need to do now is put it for YouTube. Yeah. YouTube 1080p. There we go. Panic over. It's just me being silly. So um. You can see the estimated file size here is down at it's 3,466 megabytes, so three and a half gig. It's quite a long video, I suppose, and um, so it's going to take a while to to um, actually encode. But we'll see just now. It's going to load up the encoder. Now, for a lot of you guys, this is going to be an extremely boring video. But if you're interested in buying a Surface Pro 4 or perhaps even you know, a Surface Pro 5 in the future or a Surface Pro 3. I hope you found this video useful. It's quite interesting to see that, you know, the fans were kicking on, but the CPU wasn't really going above 2.2 gigahertz at first. And when it did kick in, the video playback seemed fine. I'm not sure, perhaps that was a RAM issue. I, I really don't know why it wasn't working at first. Um, but it does seem okay now. What I will say though, um, I was trying to say before though, is you know you need to wash your battery if you are using Premiere Pro. It is, you know, if you're stressing your CPU, you are going to use a lot more of your battery. But I, I mean, not nine times out of ten when I'm encoding video, I'm going to be plugged in, so it's not going to be an issue. So I'm not sure how long this is going to take. I'll just wait just to see how long this will take, just so you can see how long it will be. So again, this is the Surface Pro 4 and I've got the i7 and I've got 256 gigabyte of storage uh, SSD and I've got 16 gigabytes of RAM. So apart from the higher storage models with 512 and one terabyte, I've got the most powerful model of the Surface Pro 4. Um, as far as, I mean, I, I don't know if I could perhaps install like a CPU management type uh, application or something to manage the CPU perhaps more efficiently. I um, I'll probably lean towards just letting Windows 10 handle it itself unless there's a problem. You know, if I was always running into this problem where that was stuttering, I might want to look into why that was happening and try to figure it out. It seemed to resolve itself after about, you know, I paused the video there for a second and I think it was about 10 minutes I was browsing online and then I went back, hadn't changed anything and then it, it just seemed to resolve itself. No idea why. So what's it saying here? It's now saying, right, okay. I imagine this is going to be an hour or so. Um, I'm guessing it's got nine hours here, but it was at 12 hours and now it's going to do eight hours. And now it's going to, yeah, it's going to do like seven and a half hours. My guess is it's going to encode this 30 minute video, which I'll link in the comment area so you can check out the video to see what it was like. But I imagine it's going to take less than an hour. I assume that the, the rate that's going down, I'm just guessing. So thanks for watching, guys. If you've got a Surface Pro 4 or you're leaning towards buying a Surface Pro 3, 4, or perhaps even a 5 in the future, I hope you found this video useful. And just bear in mind that you can change the resolution if you want to change the canvas area. You know, you can change the resolution to help you manage how things are being um, operated, how you're structuring the video and there'll be certain videos like for this video this resolution is fine perhaps in the future if i was editing a longer video i might lean towards um you know increasing the resolution or removing you know or decreasing the resolution making things bigger depending on the situation and it's you saw earlier when i changed the resolution everything in premiere pro adjusts automatically so the program works fine with windows 10 and with the surface thanks for watching guys uh, i'll get this video online um, and if you've got any questions about it, please let me know. Um, there's bound to be some things that I've not covered in this video, so please let me know in the comment area. I'll do my best to answer them, either in the comment area or in another video. So thanks for watching, and if you've not already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. Till next time, guys. Take care.